Snow volleyball is back, baby. We are headed to Patagonia. We're gonna tell you everything you need to know about snow volleyball, and we're gonna announce who the fourth person on our team is gonna be. Roll the intro. So August 1st to August 4th, we are going down to Argentina. Yes, we're missing six man, it's a huge bummer. But we're going to Patagonia to this place called San Carlos de Bariloche. Mm -hmm. All the countries south of the equator, it's winter time during our summer time. So there's gonna be snow there, hence snow volleyball. Ooh. It's a fun fact. They're having construction next door, that's why you hear all that and there's like nothing we can do. So just, yeah, sorry. What's sick about this event is that there's 14 different countries already registered from five different continents. Nigeria has a team, Cameroon has a team, and for the first time ever, China has a team in snow volleyball. So people are coming from literally all over the world. For those of you who don't know what snow volleyball is, here's a playlist that you guys can click and watch all of our six videos that we already made. But it's three verse three. It is on the snow. It's the most beautiful, picturesque sport that you could possibly imagine. Well, it's Sigo Barrioche. This time, it's at the base of the mountain. I guess there's a lot of foot traffic. We've already seen drone footage of it. It looks literally incredible. So stay tuned. So today, USA Volleyball sent us a bunch of snow volleyball gear, and we have about three boxes worth because there are four people on our team. So we're gonna open them up and tell you how we use each piece of clothing and or shoe or whatever. Or accessory. Right, or accessory. In snow volleyball, you can have four players on your team. You're allowed one sub per match, three people play. Right now, it's Madison and myself and Troy Field. The guy with the pink hat. In Italy, we only had three people on our team. We were one of the only teams without a sub. And it, we actually kind of ran into some problems because on day one of the qualifier, Madison had food poisoning and we almost pulled out of the tournament. This is day one of the qualifier. This is my bed. It's about eight inches too small. I basically pulled an all-nighter. And then we have this going on. He has food poisoning. Let's see what happens. This tournament, we are going to remedy that by adding a fourth unknown player who we will announce at the end of this video. Like a big gun. A ringer. You thought Troy was gnarly? <laughs> Wait till you see this guy. These are rad. So Adidas hooked us up with, I can't tell if they're soccer cleats or football cleats, but it says football, but well, in Argentina, football is soccer. So one thing about snow volleyball is you can't play in cross trainers. You have to play in soccer cleats that fit your feet. Ah! Buono, buono. <laughs> One thing that makes the shoes extremely important is that there's like three different types of snow that we played in. Yeah, there was slushy, icy, and like a fresh hard packed snow. We played Italy, it was like hard packed. We could run quick sets, right. you could broad jump the it's like playing indoor. When we played Slovenia, it was a bit icier. But like you couldn't get your feet there, you would just kind of like skid out. And then finally playing Russia. Uh, Russia was really slushy. It was, I remember we started off trying to run a fast offense and you're like, dude, I can't get my feet there. I keep slipping at the last second. It was kind of like playing beach, honestly. Mm -hmm. It was the most analogous to beach. Diving, you could dive like on the beach, whereas like if it was icy, you were doing pancakes and like kind of slipping and sliding, diving like indoor. Yeah, if you made like one move into one direction, it was like really hard to recover. So these are gonna help a lot more, I think. Right. What are these? These are gloves. Oh, these are gloves. It's actually not that hard to set with gloves, right? You wouldn't expect it, but setting with gloves on was actually easier because the ball is kind of spongy and slippery. So these gave it like the perfect amount of grip for you to not double the ball. I would say that indoor setting is definitely the way you want to go on snow volleyball, not beach, which is a little bit more dishy. Yeah. There were a lot of indoor setters. It was super fast release. Some people were running fast offenses. We were running a little bit of combination of both. Yeah, and I will say for like the hitter, I wore these on every single match except for the finals because like you kind of don't get as good of a grip on the ball. Oh yeah. But like going in the finals is like, I really want to win this. So I'm going to risk getting frostbite. It actually wasn't that cold. It's like 30, 32 degrees. <laughs> frostbite. 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I took them off and that actually helped with the grip on it. But maybe these will work out better. Oh. This one? 
This is like kind of like Christmas. Like, where are you with your sibling? Be like, all right, you open one, and then I'll open one, and you open one. Or you have to you have to open it at the, the same, same time. time. <laughs> Otherwise, your parent, yeah. This is like a like a like an opening ceremony sort of shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, these are for closing ceremonies. Oh, nice. It's pretty rad. This is probably something we're not gonna play in, but this is good to have like when you're resting in between matches. Yeah. All right, this is what we've all been waiting for. But we only have two of them. All right, cuts are gonna have to be made. More goodies. More jackets? I think so. Oh, these are awesome. Oh, this is actually the exact same jacket we wore in Prado Nervoso and, and from Blatz. The problem with this one is it's a little thick and cottony, so bump setting was really difficult. Digging was like, everything was super cushioned. Passing, it actually is, is a bit easier to control. I know what it is, having long sleeves, helping with that. Yeah. But we were by far and away the most clothed and warm team out of the entire tournament. Bro, wait for me. These will complement nicely with the jackets we just showed you. I kind of like this stretchiness though, look at this. That'd be kind of nice to play in. Nice and stretchy. I'll probably play in these. That's dope. Oh, the jawstring bag? Jawstring bag. Putting oh, yeah. your shoes in here and switching your shoes out for like something that's more comfortable so you're not walking around in cleats all over the place. Yeah, that is brutal. Whoa. Try will wear that for sure. Yeah, yeah, this is choice. But I mean, if you're talking about headwear and everything, you're talking about sunglasses. Oh yeah, sunglasses. Sunglasses were a little bit tricky because we didn't show this in the video, but in the qualifier in Crumplats, we played in like a literal blizzard. I had sunglasses on, but because it was like snowing so much and even wiping it off just created like a, a blur like sunglasses ended up being like <laughs> more detrimental than helpful it's like when you have bad windshield wipers you know and they don't really work exactly and like you're trying to wipe it and it's still like <laughs> you still can't see anything yeah it's like that for me sunglasses was super important because the sun is shining down and it's reflecting off the snow so it's like twice as bright sometimes it's even more bright than it is playing in a beach tournament these are thermals I would suggest bringing at least two of these things because they oh, can yeah. get a little stinky. Actually, you know what? It wasn't that cold, so you don't need as much attire as you would think. These thermals pretty much get the job done. You throw some board shorts over or maybe sweatpants. I play with sweatpants. I think you played with board shorts. Bibbidees. We got some regular socks. I loved playing in these heavy duty ones. So we're gonna find out from the FIVB how you guys can watch it live. As you know, we're gonna make our own videos about the entire trip. Standing at six foot three, 170 pounds, a setter for the University of Southern California, Jameson Hyde, Kalei Kalmaka Okaleni McKibben. So there you have it. There's not two Beard Brothers, there's three. And we're all going to Patagonia <laughs> to play snow volleyball. Let's try. Yeah. See what happens. <laughs>